Hey everybody, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist, my guy at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover a new feature in 2018 which flies a little bit under the radar and you may not know about it, and that is Dash scripting. So if you go to the What's New doc and you go under the General section here, as you scroll down, you'll see this tiny little blurb about Dash scripting right here. And if you click on the link, it'll send you to a very, very simple page that shows you a few examples of the commands that you can use to apply some sort of a mathematical operation onto attributes or channels in Maya. Now you can also customize this, which I'll talk about uh, towards the end. So I'm actually going to show this uh, in kind of context with some of the primitive objects here. And you'll notice while I'm on the topic that we have a number of new primitive objects being able to create things like platonic solids, which, which includes things like uh, tectahedrons and octahedrons and so on. Uh, also things like gears, which you'll see here and here. Uh, these are the uh, platonic solids, these examples here. And then we also have these things called super uh, ellipses and spherical harmonics and ultra shapes, which are all part of the same node. And they create these really kind of crazy and interesting shapes like something like this or something like this and something like this. So uh, lots of different varieties and types of shapes. And then of course, each one of these has attributes associated with it. So for instance, this is a, a gear and I can actually go upstream here and grab the, the gear node and I can go in and increase the number of sides or go in and modify the height. I also go in and add things like twisting and turning uh, and things like uh, the spacing of the gears and the length of the gears and so on. I'm going to undo all that, but you get the basic idea. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details, but just to kind of show you that those are there, I thought it was worth pointing out. Now, right now, these are all sharing the same Lambert material, which is the default. So I'm actually going to use a handy little bonus tool under rendering, and it's called assign new material for each selected. And what that will do is it will either assign a new gray material or it will randomize the material color and allow me to assign a unique material, a unique shader, as well as just a, a random kind of default color to that. And then of course I can go in and I can modify the color for any of these. So say for instance I want to dial this uh, more into the green or more over into the blue or whatever. I can adjust that now and you can see that it's affecting only that one object and not all the objects because the shader is unique. So that can come in handy. So let's get to the point of the talk and that is dash scripting. So dash scripting basically allows you to apply mathematical operations to a series of objects. So let's take all these objects and let's say that I wanted to offset them on a given axis. Well, I can manually go in and do that, uh, but sometimes I want to do it in an automated way. So what you can do is say, for instance, on the Y axis, I can click on that channel and then I can alt right click and that opens up a little box. And now I can type in one of the built in dash commands. So for instance, there is one for linear offset where I can actually set this to linearly offset over 10 units. So I hit L10, hit enter, and now those are going to linear off linearly offset uh, over the course of 10 units vertically. Of course, this has to do with the, the order of the selection, which I had kind of randomly based on the placement of these. But if I go in and I select these in order, then it's going to in turn apply that operation in order. So let me actually get the right channel here. I'll grab translate Y, L, 10. And now each one of these is going to be offset over 10 vertical units. Now you can also set a range. So I could go in here and I could say I want to offset these from negative 5, comma, whoops, got to put a parenthesis in there, L, negative 5, comma, 5. And that will set the range between negative 5 and 5. And now it does the same 10 unit offset, but it does it in the negative and in the positive. Now you can apply this in lots of different ways and you can do it with lots of different channels. So let's say I wanted to scatter these within a certain range. I can grab the X and I can grab the Z channel by control clicking. And now I'll once again, alt right click. And I want to randomize the placement of these. So I'm going to set a random placement between, let's just say negative 10 and 10 and hit enter. And now it's going to randomly distribute those in, in the X and the Z direction. So the more of these I have, then the, the more it's going to apply kind of the randomness. So if I were to go in and say, for instance, duplicate all these objects, select them again, and then we'll just reapply that like so. I'll just say R negative uh, 10 comma 10. And that's going to randomly set the X and Z for all of these objects. And you have to have the front parenthesis there. 
There we go. So I can just basically reapply this until I get something that I like. Now one of the cool things is that you can do this with any type of object and any type of attribute. So for instance here, I've got some lights in my scene that are simple point lights that are default right now. I can go in and I can grab any channel on the lights and for all lights that I've selected, I can apply some sort of value. So I can go in and I can do a random value between say a zero and one and apply that and now it's going to randomly set the intensity of each one of those lights and I can even do it on all of the color channels simultaneously so I can randomly go in and say I want value of 0.3 to uh, 0.9 and now it's going to randomly assign the color you can't see this guy because his value was a little bit down but let's bump the intensity up there now you can see that each one of these lights is given a random color so similar to the script that I showed for shaders, except this is just applying it directly to the channels of the light color. So you can also do some really interesting things with animation as well. So here I've got my 10 or so primitive objects. And if I play this back, what you can see is I've created a really basic animation. So these are moving left to right. They're rotating around each axis. And then they're scaling from small to large. So I've got multiple channels of animation going on here. And you can see they're all linear. They're moving uh, in each case for each animation. They're all moving at a very linear rate. So let's say I wanted to accelerate and decelerate these really quickly. Now I could of course do this from the graph editor. So I could grab any object and I could edit the curves in the graph editor. Although sometimes you want to maybe work a little bit more quickly. So let's actually take the first one as an example. I'm going to take this object here and I'm going to select all of the associated channels. Now I want to ease those in and out. So what I can do is grab all these channels and then control or sorry, alt right click. And I'm going to use E, which stands for ease and just close parentheses. Now when I hit enter, that's going to change the rate of that animation so that it eases in and eases out or eases out and eases in. So you can see it starts off more slowly in the beginning, it cell accelerates and then it slows down at the end and all the rest are still linear. So I can do this on multiple objects simultaneously. So I can grab say for instance, you know, two or three of these objects and I can come in here and just say E parenthesis for each one of these and that will ease in, ease out or ease out, ease in the animation for each one of those. Now in some cases I might want to slow down and speed up at just the beginning or just the end. So what I can do is control the ease with a, an argument. So I can use a negative value uh, to do this. So I can go in and I can type E negative one. And what that will do is it will ease out of the first keyframe and then accelerate fast in to the last keyframe. So you can see this guy down here starting out very slowly and then he's accelerating to a snapping stop right there at the end. And again, I can apply this to multiple objects if I want to. The other option is the opposite of this. So I'll grab the one above it and I'll come in here and I'll say that I want to ease with a value of one and that will do exactly the opposite. So it'll start out really quickly, it'll shoot out and then it will ease into the starting point. So you can see the first one has the ease out fast in. The second one or the one here that's selected has the fast out ease in. So the, the cool thing about this is you can work on lots of objects at the same time. So if I want all these objects to accelerate in the same way, I'll do E1, close parentheses. They each set to the same ease in at the end of the, the animation. So now I'm going to pop out and kind of accelerate out of the end uh, for the beginning of the animation and then speed up at the end. And then likewise, I could do the opposite here, E negative one. And now if I play this back, they're going to slow out of that first frame, first keyframe, and then accelerate and pop in to that last keyframe. So another cool thing that you can do is offset animation in time. So here I've got these 10 objects that are all animated with the same basic animation. And I want to offset those. So what I can do is grab them in the order in which I want to offset them. So the order that you select is important because that's the order that it will apply it. And I'll go in here and alt right click on all the channels and I'll type in TS for time offset and I'll type in a value of one and hit enter. And now when I play this back, 
you'll see that each object is offset in time to create this kind of staggered effect, which is pretty cool. Now I just need a few more frames to actually see this. Let's bump that up to 300, and that should be the maximum amount. And there we go, it does each one. So now I can offset this more or less based on the value that I give it. So I can type in TS, uh, let's say, 3, and it's going to give me a wider range for the offset. And if I play this back, you can see that now there's more of a delay between when the first one starts and when the second one starts. And then that just staggers on down the line and applies to each one of these. So what you can see is in the graph editor, it did indeed take all those keys and offset them in time. So once again, if I do something like a TS1, then I'm going to get a smaller offset. Actually, it's going to continue to offset. Let's go back to the beginning. If I do something like a a TS1, then it's going to give me a very small offset. If I undo that and I do something like a TS10, then it's going to give me a very big offset. So you can really kind of experiment with this one until you get something you know that kind of suits your needs. But it's just, like I said, a quick way of going in and creating some really nice kind of variation with your animation. So there's a couple other things to point out. If you look at the bottom of the docs, uh, you see here this little note about customizing dash commands. So you can create your own custom dash commands. And you do that in one of two ways. You have to edit something called the dash.json file, but there's also a dash commands Python script. So you basically write your own Python scripts in order to create a very specific effect. So as an example, I've created a series of cubes here, and I'm selecting these in order, in the order that I want to apply an offset. And I'm going to grab the scale value, the scale attribute, and I'm going to just linearly offset this uh, over, say, 10. So now what that's going to do is it's going to give me kind of a stair step effect. So it's going to go from basically 0 to 10, uh, scaling these up in, evenly in between the two. But what if I wanted to accelerate or decelerate the rate at which this scales? Well, there's no built-in function uh, in Dash currently to do that. So let's create one. If you go to the install location for my 2018 under plugins mash, what you'll see is a scripts folder. And in that scripts folder is where we would customize our dash script. So if I type in dash star, what you'll see is I have a series of dash related files, one of which is a JSON file, which stores the command as well as information about the command. And then there's the dash command.py, which allows you to store Python scripts. So I've created a custom version of each of these. So what you'll see is if I open my custom version of the script, this is dash commands.py. And at the bottom, if I scroll down, I should have a linear uh, option in here. You can see each one of these is the different commands. So here is the command, uh, the function for dash linear, which takes in a couple of arguments. And then it basically goes through in and steps through uh, each item that you have selected, and it linearly offsets those values. So what I did is I simply copied the dash linear script, and I created a new function, basically, that will go in and instead of linearly stepping through, it exponentially stepping steps through. So instead of uh, multiplying by uh, the step value, it actually doubles that essentially with each one. So now I've got a Python command called dash expo, Python function called dash expo. And what I can do now is I can reference that from the JSON file. So if I go into the dash JSON file, it's a little bit hard to see here, but you can see this is where I would put my different functions. So I have the dash ease, dash random, dash time step, dash linear. Each of these is associated with a specific identifier, so E, R, T, S, L are the ones that I just showed in the demo, I created a new one, import dash command for dash expo, which is that Python function I created. And then I'm associating that with X. So let's go back in and I'll just set the scale of these back to nine. And now instead of linearly scaling these from zero to uh, 10, I'm actually going to turn this into an exponential. So I will alt right click and I'll do x 0 comma 10 hit enter and now what you can see is that 
these do indeed exponentially scale. So I start out with very small, gets a little bigger, quite a bit bigger, and then exponentially grows with each one from there. I realized after I recorded that, that that wasn't actually exponential. I had my math wrong. So all I was doing was scaling the linearity of it, scaling the, each, the individual offsets, but they were all still linear. So I rewrote that uh, so that now uh, if I go in here and I do x for exponential 10, uh, now when I apply that, that should indeed be exponential. So here you can see it's like doubling in size with each one. So that's double the size of this one and this double the size of that one until it gets really, really, really big to the point to where I can't quite even keep track of it. But, uh, you know, if you look at it at just the right angle, you can kind of start to see, uh, you know, how that works. So that just uh, is, you know, just one example of lots of different kinds of, you know, things that you can create just to kind of prove the point that if you come up with a, a reusable kind of cool idea for some kind of a mathematical operation, very simple to create them and then even share them with others. So that wraps it up. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of the kinds of things that you can do with Dash and what it's for. And hopefully people will start to create some cool stuff from this and maybe even start to uh, share libraries of these different functions that uh, could be used by lots of people. All right, take care. Bye.